Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar where we're going to talk about TAPS and how TAPS can make running turnarounds easier. My name is Ian Nicholson. Um, I am VP Solutions at Emerald Associates. I have about 25 years of experience all over the world. Um, I do a lot of risk work and I do a lot of project work, but turnarounds are the thing that I really enjoy. Now, I've worked in a number of different industries, um, doing a number of different shutdowns and turnarounds, but we always have the same problem when we're dealing with those. Joining me tonight is Mary Lynn Backstrom. She's based in Edmonton. Uh, Mary Lynn is also a turnaround specialist, and although she started working on military aircraft maintenance, she's now uh, moved that experience to doing a lot of uh, plant maintenance and plant turnaround work. So what are the challenges that we have in the shutdown turnaround space? Well, the first one is that our projects are quite large. You know, we have a lot going on and we have a lot of risk. Um, you know, we might have $500,000 a day in lost production revenue. Um, we could be spending $100,000 a day, or, or sorry, $100,000 per hour um, on our, our project on the, on the tradespeople on the materials that we use and because of that we have high management visibility now worldwide the plants that we work on are getting older which means they need more repairs they need all kinds of technical upgrades and those technical upgrades quite often require capex work to be done and that capex work has to be tied into the plant in the turnaround window we're also getting longer turnaround cycles. So what that means is there's a lot of money lost while the plant is down. So management wants to keep the plant operating as much as possible. So that means that when we do do our turnarounds, they tend to be larger. There's a lot of pressure to do them in a shorter time. And the reality is it's getting harder and harder to find skilled resources to do that work. A typical turnaround in our part of the world is about 80,000 activities in Primavera, runs around 1.2 million man hours of direct work, and generally goes between 35 and 45 days. So what do we need to be successful? Well, the first thing we need is we need fast, accurate schedule updates. We can't be spending hours and hours and hours entering progress into the schedule. We need to be able to to give earned value reports to management that are accurate and timely so they know what's going on during the during each day of the turnaround. We need to be able to manage canceled work and for that matter found work. And we need to have time to do analysis. If you're always on your back foot and you're always behind in doing your progressing, it's very hard to sit down and do some analysis to understand exactly what's going on. So some of the benefits of using TAPS for, you, for progressing your schedule. Um, TAPS allows you to, um, to get information in in a quick and accurate manner. So let's talk about how it works. Now, TAPS, we have a whole bunch of different solutions here. So you can have an on-premise version. You can have a cloud version. You can have a desktop computer version, or you can have a mobile version. All of those options are available. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the standard version, and we'll talk a little bit about the mobile version. So let's talk about the standard version first. So when you want to use TAPS, the first thing you do is you generate your work reports. These are typically paper-based reports that have a look, at, look ahead window, perhaps 36 or 48 hours. They get sent out to the field. The, the, the guys in the field at the end of their shift update the progress on the activities that they've worked on, and they send those back to the office. Once they're received back in the office, we have a percentage report, and that report can have as few or as many percentages in as, the, as you want. So for example, on the left side of the screen, we have a really extreme example where we have 5% all the way through to 100%. Um, but we might want to do smaller numbers. We might want, might want to say that we're only going to allow people to report 25, 55, or 25, 50, 75, 99, or 100%. Or we might, 
or we might just want to say 50 or 100 percent the thing is we can we can customize this report to follow any business rules that you have around progressing your activities the person who's doing the updates can also manually put in any number they want into the system so if i scan 70 percent i really want it to be 72.5 percent i can go and type that in after the fact now taps also allows you um, to cancel work so if there's work that's not going to be done because it's not required you can simply scan the cancel barcode and it will can cancel that work so the report comes in from the field at the end of the shift. We sent out a nice, shiny, clean report on in the morning, and it came back all dirty and covered with oil and fingerprints, but with percentage, com, percentages written on it, which we can then easily scan into the computer. So what we do is we scan the barcode for the activity. Uh, we t take the percentage that's been written on the paper, and we scan the appropriate percentage complete off the scanning sheet. Then we're done. We can go to the next activity and we do the same thing. So rather than going in P6 and doing control F and typing in the activity ID and going to that activity and clicking around on the screen and entering all the progress, we can progress this activity with two scans of the barcode scanner. The, the, the screen will show us what we've scanned so we can see exactly what's going on and we can fix anything that we got wrong. Um, and when we're happy, we can save the progress which goes out, out and updates P6. So very quick, very simple, um, very difficult to get wrong. In fact, many of our clients don't even have the schedulers doing the scanning. They get the scanning done by data entry clerks because there really is nothing that can go wrong. However, what people have been asking for the last couple of years is they've been asking for the ability to use a TAPS platform on a mobile device. So maybe that's a tablet, hopefully a ruggedized tablet, or maybe it's a smartphone. Um, and so we developed TAPS Mobile to, to accommodate that requirement. Now we've tried to make it simple as well. So the idea here is that there's very few things that we have to enter. So we configure the system the same way. We put the update date and time that we're working to. We put the percentages that we want to use um, right on the mobile device as part of our setup. Then we can download the activities that we want to take a look at. So we can create the filters that will then show us um, what works coming, how we want it sorted, um, how much of a look ahead we want. And then, then from that, we can very simply status the activity. So just like we did before, instead of having to go and you know scroll through pages and pages of stuff and find the activity and click on all kinds of different screens, we simply go to the activity, we can pick the percent complete, and we're done. Again, very quick, very easy, and, and gives people in the field the ability to update the schedule without spending a huge amount of time having to go into P6 and log in and enter all of that data. Now, once you've got everything in, you should have more time to do analysis. So I mentioned before, we need time to do analysis. What management wants is they want simple reports. They want something like these green up reports, which basically show our progress, which are in a colored manner, so they can see exactly where we're at on the work without having to go through pages and pages and pages of Primavera output. So if we have time to get the information in, we can very easily do analysis and get really good information out and have confidence that management's going to see the right information. All right, so let's take a look. I'm going to turn this over to, to Mary Lynn. Uh, she's going to um, she's going to um, show you how the system works. So I'm just going to make her the presenter. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll get going through this in just one second here. I just need to share my screen. Okay, so the first place that I would like to start, I just want to walk through how do you actually do an update using TAPS? Well, we've got a little sample file here. Nothing too huge, so if I scrolled 
down here a little bit, you'll see there's a lot less activities in here than there would normally be in your turnaround schedule, of course. However, you can run into the same types of, of issues. As Ian was mentioning, if you're looking for activities as you go down to update them, if I need to update manually, if I'm down at the bottom, I need to go and find the first activity that I need to update if I don't have it on my screen. Well, control, find, that's fine. If I say pre and I click on up, now if I forget to do that, I'll end up doing it a second time, that type of scenario, and say find next, there is the first activity we need to update. So from there, I still need to go in and I still need to say actual start, actual finish. Now I can carry on to the next activity. So let's go have a look at how easily we can get some of this information in using tabs. So first of all, what I'd like to do is log into desktop tabs, the one that you're going to actually be using the barcodes with. We will look at the mobile right, right after that. So when I log into TAPS, you can see the new version. The login looks a little different for those of you who might be using or have seen the older version, but we log in the same way. We've got much the same interface that, that we're looking at. Now, the first thing I need to do, of course, is to set my update time. So if I want to leave it at today, if I was updating, for example, for day shift as of the start of night shift, that type of scenario, I can do that. Now, 7 p.m. is fine, but I'll have to go back up here so that it starts everything on the hours always easier and set it to p.m. And I've set my update time. Now, the same as, as the older version of piece of sorry TAPS did, when you're updating for P6, you've got three options here. You can see the defaults on our update milestones, run out of sequence report. And we have another option here, dissolve canceled activity logic. That applies specifically to activities that we cancel. And we'll walk through cancel a little later. So that particular one we don't need on right at the moment. So let's go ahead and put an update in. So all I really have to do, and I realize you can't see the reports that I'm scanning, but if I go in, for example, and I want to update an activity, I just clicked on one scan. Now that particular activity is 75% complete. So all I have to do is status it at 75% complete. If I need to go in and change any information, as Ian was, was indicating, you can click in any of these boxes. I'll just show you what that looks like. So if I did need to do that, that option's available to you. Now, we can have activities that can be updated in a number of different ways because they're tracking different things in our schedule. Now, that's not that common in turnarounds. But the next activity, just consider you can use this tool to update any schedule on any project, potentially. Like that is the way it's built. So this next activity, this particular one is physical percent complete and is it has steps. Well, for anybody who has had to go in and update steps in P6, you don't just go to the status tab, you find the activity, you go to the steps tab and you take each step and update it as it is required. Well, I can do those same kind of updates from here. So I can scan my, scan my first step And if that's complete, I simply just complete it. If it isn't, I can give it a percentage. This particular activity has four steps. So you can see that we're just scanning the, the steps in sequence here. So it is that easy. I don't have to go and find it in P6 and I don't have to go through give it a start date and then go in and update the steps. You'll notice as I started updating, it's doing the rest of it for me. So at that point, if I want to send just those two updates 
over to P6, I can easily do that. So what I can do is just at the bottom here, click Save. And I do have an out of sequence report here. So if it sees any information that it sees as out of sequence, it's going to tell you about it. It's not going to let you sidestep it. So for now, what I'm going to do with this particular one is I'm going to log out. Let's see what this looks like so far in P6. So if I go into, into P6 and I go to my two activities that I updated, what I need to do, of course, is I need to hit F5. I need to refresh my screen. Now, you can see I've got the SD110. The physical percent complete is updated to 100%. And I also have, if I go into the steps, you can see each one of the steps has been updated. So this one updated using the physical percent complete that's on that activity. Now I can also click on the next one and its duration and it was status to 75% complete. But there is something else you want to be aware of here. We had some options at the top of the, of the tap screen. One of them was for taps to look after milestones for me. And you'll notice I have a milestone up here, start shutdown. I did not scan that in. That updated as a result of the updates that I put into the schedule because of that option. Now that's something that personally I find really useful because when you're doing, when you're doing the updates, what I find is a lot of times that's a check that people are scrambling to do to make sure that they haven't missed things. There, well, I wouldn't say there's nothing worse, but you definitely don't want to be issuing a report for turnaround milestones, for example. You get it printed off, you look at it and you think, impossible. How are some of those ones not actualized? And you find out that you missed them in updates. This way, if the activity is started, it's going to look after the, the predecessor milestone for you, that type of scenario, so you don't have to go back and check all the time. Now, another thing I want to have a look at, we've done one update. And my apologies, I should have mentioned in here, we can reschedule this. So we can, at this point, our updates are in. There was only two of them, a little slow get, getting going, but I can schedule it and start doing my analysis. So in that case, we're doing the 7 p.m. So let's just schedule that one. And now if we've done our first update here, so if we wanna go in and we want to put in another um, status, round. All I have to do, I could have left it open, just go, go back, but I would have to reset my data date anyways. So let's go in and have a look at a few more updates and you'll see right away how easy this is. So in this case, we're going, going to jump ahead here. So we did Today's day shift. Now we're going to do updates for tomorrow morning. So for night shift. So in this case, we want to set this to 7 a.m. And again, we can adjust our options as required. But let's go look at some of the other ways we can go in and update some of this information. So if I've got another set of activities and I've got another report from the field, so I can just start scanning. First activity they're telling me is complete. And you'll notice it tells you it is duration percent complete. And all I've done is scan two barcodes and that information will go over to P6. Now, if I go in and scan the next one, this particular one is 25%. So again, even if it's not complete, you can still just scan the duration on it for duration percent and keep going. So again, the next one, the report's telling me 25. Next one, 
25. And the next activity is a complete one. So I can go in and scan it as complete. Now, if I scan something on the screen and I look and think, oh, I didn't get the right one, maybe I've got a report that's got a few extra activities on it, that kind of thing, you have a remove scan available as well. So while you're on that activity, if you scan remove, it will take it off your desktop, you can carry on. So it does have a number of different pieces in it to make things very, very easy for you. So if I go in and complete the next one. Now, we spoke about the 99%. Now, the next activity that I've, I've scanned in, the 1-51121-060, that one, the field is telling me 99%. So that one's not quite finished. So what we can do is, same idea, it's just a 99%. And you'll notice that as I'm scanning these in, I'm not scanning anything to change the status. The software knows what to do with that, but it is looking after that so that when we send it over, it's not going to cause any, any issues. So I'm scanning the next one here. And I have just a few more to do here, not a lot of them. The next activity that I need to status, there's one other... Uh, piece of information here I want you to be aware of because it's handy to know. If I scan this next activity, this particular one, and I could do this on a number of different ones, but let's have a look at this. It gives me the ability to scan the resource information. Now, again, that's probably not something that you're going to be too worried about doing during a turnaround. Usually there's bulk downloads, that kind of thing. But again, there is functionality in the software that's put there. So this is a tool that can be used for updating any type of project. So if I go in and I want to scan this particular one as uh, remaining duration, so I can give it remaining units if I want to, depending on what you're you're looking to do. So I could say remaining two, that kind of thing, or I could scan, I can scan it in a number of different ways. So with that one, I just wanted you to know that you can go in and you can definitely update your resources as well. So depending on what you want to do with that. So if that particular one wasn't um, the way I wanted to update that, I did mention you've got a few options. So while I'm still on that one, what I can do is say remove and it will take the last the last pieces out. Remember, I haven't I haven't sent it across. So you can go through and you can update these. And if you happen to scan something not quite the way you wanted it to, you can definitely go back and fix it. So I have another activity here that I need to complete. So I can go in and I can complete it. And I have one here that it, you'll notice the ones so far on the screen are duration percent complete. Now I can also scan and you'll notice the next one is coming up physical percent complete. Not a problem. Not necessarily a scenario you'll find in turnaround schedules too much, but something that you can address. And in this case, what I need is 75% according to my report. And you'll notice that it gives me a pink indicator. In other words, it needs something else provided. So I can give it percent complete remaining duration that that piece of information. So if I go to my remaining remaining duration, I can set it to eight. And we can tell on the screen right away, software is happy, it's all good. So the other thing that I can do here, SD140, I can go in and this particular one is units percent complete. Again, not a problem for P6. I can go in and I can say that particular one is 50%. And in this case, what I can do is I could go in, for example, and, and say that I had remaining of two, or maybe, maybe I 
haven't got my scan sheet in front of me. I do, but just to, to remind you, I can go in here and I could set numbers by typing. So don't forget, you've got that option as well. So we've done another update here, a longer one. So let's push that over to P6. So if I go in here and I save it, and I can scan screens full of this information, not a problem, because if it goes off the bottom of the page, you'll get a slide bar at the side, and you can go down and check all the information. Now, we've got information here telling us we've got out-of-sequence activities, and we do with that update. So we can easily print this, or if you're lucky enough to be working off a screen, you can scan off of. If you find that, oh, there's something that got missed, I can scan it and I can update it right from there. But at the very least, you can, you can print it. So if I just go back here, and at this point, I can log out of here, but let's go in and see what have we got in P6. So the first thing I need to do is refresh my screen. So now you can see where I've got a number of different update pieces in here. So we can go in and we can schedule our project. So if I go in and schedule the project, this was at 7 p.m. So I can go in and change to the 9th and set it at 7 a.m. and schedule. And from then on, you're, you're away doing your, whoops, went the wrong way on that one. So you're away doing your analysis. And that's really what you want because I've worked many large turnarounds. There's nothing worse that's than spending an hour and a half out of a, out of a two hour window. And what you're doing is just data entry and then you're really really rushed to see what's actually going on on your on your schedule so what we want to do here is reschedule this And at this point, we could go in and start doing our analysis. But there is a few things I want you to have a look at here. So in P6, of course, when you're doing your updates, what I'm going to do here is just change to a new layout. And I'm going to say after updates, first of all, because let's look at what our schedule looks like after the updates. And I'll just pull it across so we can see a little more of it. So we've got this particular scenario. So we've got percent completes, that kind of information. We've got our actual starts, actual finishes where we did complete the activities. But in the background, there is something else that is being done for us. And it's really handy to know about. So if I go in to my layout and I open this, I'm going to say no. and I want the earned earned value. So I've got a few different earned value ones here. I'll go to the draft one just because I've got a few different um, columns on it. Actually, sorry, I'm in the wrong section here. I want the TAPS earned value, that one from the top. There we go. So when we go in and look at earned value, well, of course, where we've completed activities, where we've got progress on activities, you're going to have different pieces of information. Now, of course, everybody's familiar with earned value reports. You need, you need your numbers. What you want to be cognizant of, of course, is the fact that P6, out of the box, calculates earned value at the activity level. But let's have a look at the resource tab. And my apologies, I am going to change to another layout here because I've got one created that has all those in it. So let's just open this. And what I want to do is I want to go to one of these activities that has 
information it has. It doesn't have to be 100%. I was looking for one that has progress on it. So what you want to be aware of here is I've got the earned value numbers. So here's my earned value units, my earned value cost at the activity level. But I also have TAPS earned units, earned labor cost, and the columns get a little squished here, but you've got earned labor units as well. And what you've got access to here, these pieces of information, you, you'll notice they've got a little arrow beside them. Well, that's because they have the ability to roll up. So that gives you an interesting piece as far as reporting goes. Now, you also have cases, and this is our little sample. There's not a lot of activities in here, so we don't have a lot of multiple resource scenarios. But just to give you uh, kind of a feel for where this comes really, really handy with is I've worked a few turnarounds where they had specific activities that were actually being looked after by more than one subcontractor. And when these activities, of course, if they go off track, they're running a little late, something like that, you get a lot of kind of conversation, let's say, around uh, whether it's one contractor that's causing the problem or another contractor that's causing the problem, that kind of thing. You can start not so much. Sorry, not not so much on an activity by activity basis, but maybe you're noticing a bit of a trend here through some of these activities where you can see where a certain contractor is involved your earned value is not looking the way it should. You can run the earned value into reports on the resource val the, the resource by resource. So if these two um, resources on this activity were from different contractors, you can split them out and get earned value values off of each one for reporting purposes, which is not something that is available in P6 out of the box. Now, there is some more functionality I would like to show you, but let's go in and have a look at, I'm sure what everybody is waiting for here, let's have a look at TAPS on your phone or TAPS mobile. So this is the tab that I logged in for general TAPS. Now, if I look at mobile, now my apologies, I'm running with the developer tools in order to be able to to give you a look at what this actually looks like on your phone. Because as much as I would really love to be able to show you it right on my phone, it's a little difficult to get it, to get the camera to go that way and give us something that's gonna work. So before I log in here, what I wanna do is refresh because it has been sitting for a bit. So I just wanna make sure that it's refreshed properly. So what I wanna do here is log in Now, you'll notice this already is looking a little different. You saw a screenshot of it, but it's very simple to use. So if I'm logging in off my phone and I need to set the update date, same idea as what we did before. All I need to do, if I was setting it to, for example, seven, uh, let's, I'll take it up a little bit here. I tend to do I'm used to the 7 a.m., 7, 7 p.m., 4 a.m., 4 p.m., that kind of thing. I do realize some need to be 7.30, but just to show you, you can set it very easily. Now, you'll notice that when I entered that off that dialog box, it closes fairly quickly. So if you're a, a little in the mindset that I usually am, I want to make sure I've got everything set the way I want it before I start putting updates in here. If I go into my settings, I can see what it's set at. And no, I didn't click on the PM at the proper point or hard enough or didn't didn't save it for whatever reason. I'm thinking probably my mouse, I might need a new battery, who knows? So I can go and fix that. So here are my options. Now, if I need to reset the options here, I can do that. I can set dissolve cancelled activities. 
and I'll do that this time because I am going to show you how we, you can cancel an activity. Now you can do it from the desktop in TAPS as well, but I'll, I'll run it through here as well. Now, if I'm looking at my percentages, now Ian spoke about your barcodes that, that you can generate for your percentages. So how are we going to deal with this on the phone? It is extremely easy. So you'll notice I've got 25, 50, 75, 100, and 10% in there. I don't have 99. So what do I have to do if I need 99? What I do is just click in here, type 99, click add. It's that easy. So it's extremely easy to get this set up the way you need it set up. So once I've, once I've got that set up, uh, I'm just going to hide this bar at the bottom because of the fact that I need the save button. So once I've got this set up, I can save this. It says saved successfully and I can go to my activities. Now you'll notice nothing came up initially. That is by design. So what we need to do is just click on this little icon over here and it's going to take us to what I had set up last. So your configuration is definitely saved. Now, if I'm looking at this and I think, no, that's not what I want, I can just take that off, take that off and start again. I can set up what I need. So we're basically going to be setting up what is there, but I just want you to see how easy this piece is as well. So if I click the filter by and click project, now if I click the drop down, I've got a list of projects. So I can go into the same project that I was in in the desktop tabs and I can apply this. Now I can set subsequent elements as well. You'll notice you've got the and here. I won't get too convoluted about the filter by but you've got definitely some options there. So one of the things I want people to be aware of is you don't have to be worried about trying to do tabs updates on your phone and you're scrolling and you're scrolling and you're scrolling and you're basically giving yourself carpal tunnel syndrome trying to get to the activity that you need. You don't have to use it in that way. You definitely can set your, your filters, your searches, that type of stuff so that it's not going to cause that kind of issue. So sort by. Now I could set dates, that, that kind of parameter up here as well. I'll keep this simple. Now, when I go to sort, I'm going to use an activity field, but you've got codes, that kind of thing. So you'll notice it defaults to start date and that's fine, but I'll do something a little different. I'll sort it by activity ID and you have the option to reverse the order as well. So I've set up the parameters I want. I just click apply and I click apply here, here's my activities. It's that simple. And if I was logging back in and I didn't want to change those parameters, when I go into settings, if I have to change my data date, maybe I've set it from the front screen and I'm fine and I don't have to go in there. All I have to do is click on this icon, say apply it, and it's going to give you the same thing back. You don't even have to go and redo that either. So enough about that. Let's go and have a look at actually putting some updates in here. So, so far we've shown you some, some screens, but let's put some information in here. So let's go in and update a couple of activities. Now I did mention that we were going to look at what does it do with cancel? So that's one of the, one of the updates, not activities, sorry that we will have a look at. So you'll notice that I've got some of these are reading 100% complete already. I didn't filter anything out. Remember, I just said, okay, give me the activities in the file because it is a very small file. But I can go in here and if I want to update straight from here, I can do that. So I could say, okay, this activity here for open remove manways, I can say complete. Now, this is what it shows at the roll-up level. If I click this little drop down here, I can see exactly what's being changed. And if I need to go in and change other elements, I can do that in here as well. So if, you're, if you want to scroll through, you can roll it up and you can do the scroll 
down to find another activity. If you're more comfortable with it unrolled and scroll up and down, it lets you do both. So the view, the way you want to view the information entirely up to you. So we've completed the one activity. So let's go in and cancel one. We did talk about cancel. So this is an activity I'm sure you really in the real world would not want to be canceling, but just to show how you how it works, let's have a look. So let's go to the next activity here. And you'll notice that I can complete an activity, but I can also cancel an activity. So if I want to see the drop down here, you'll notice status is canceled in the bottom. So you've got a lot of different functionality that's available through the mobile version of TAPS as well. So what we want to do now is let's save it. Still gives me my out of sequence report. So you don't have to worry about not seeing that. I realize you're on your phone, so obviously you're not gonna be using barcodes, but it definitely says, okay, this activity was scanned in and there is a couple of activities here that you need to address. So if I wanted to go back at that point and update these two, I can. So you can just go out of that report and you can go back in and you can, you can actually just go back in and update. But before we get spending too much time, my apologies, I'm looking at the clock here. Let's go into P6 and have a look at what it has actually sent us in updates. So just before I refresh it here, it'll probably refresh when I open the new layout, which is fine if that's if it does um, go in and do that. So I'm just going to go back to the after updates. Now, if I want to go in and have a look at the activities that I updated, what I need to do is I'm just going to hit F5 to make sure they are updated the way I had put them in. And you'll see that that's where the cancel one just came across now. So I had updated 20 and 30 here. And this, sorry, that's an, an issue that shows up on my uh, P6 this version on this laptop every so often. It's not TAPS doing it. It's totally my, my uh, machine that does that once in a while. So if I look at these activities, here is the first one that I updated that is 100%. So it does the same updates as you would do from the barcode. Now, scanning, cancel, whether I cancel an activity using barcode scanners, or if I do it from the mobile, it is going to update the activity exactly the same. So you can easily see which activities are canceled. Now, you'll notice it's got a start and finish date on it. So it's been actualized. It's been actualized at a zero duration. So it's not going to drive your schedule out or anything like that. So before we look at this a little further, let's go in and have a look at what does that actually give us access to? So I'm just going to open another layout here. And it's cancelled work. So if I look at this cancelled activity, now I don't know how many of you have been involved in having to put reports together and things like that at the end of a large turnaround. One of the items, not just at the end, but this is some. This is an issue that comes up during the turnaround as, as well. So what happens in some companies, they may have a process still in existence where if this activity is canceled, they pretty much copy paste it to a different file. I have seen so many times issues with they copy and paste it into another file. Some, some setting is not right or it doesn't get pasted properly. And the information that was in the activity gets messed up. And when you go to run reports, whether it's during this, the project or at the end of the turnaround or project for that matter, you have a little bit of legwork to come to terms with what did that activity actually say? Well, TAPS looks after that for you because you can see when I cancel it with TAPS, cancel, I've got a flag here. So I can actually use this as a filter for 
bringing on my screen or generating report of every cancelled activity throughout the project or at the end. It tells me cancelled the 8th of June, that just defaults to, to today's date of course, cancelled original duration, I've got cancelled predecessor and successor. So remember that dissolve logic that I checked off before I put this, this update in the mobile device. If I go into relationships, you'll notice there's none there. So this activity is sitting completed and canceled in my schedule. All the information is still in there. I can still get to it. Now, there's another thing to be aware of here. In the resources, it tracks what's been canceled in the resource side as well. So you have a cancel flag sitting down at that level and reporting information at that level as well. So all that good information that usually there is a bit of a scramble quite often to get into reports and get it there correctly is all looked after in tabs. And all it took was a, was a cancel barcode scan or clicking cancel on your my mobile phone. Either one of those would do it. So you can see when we when we go in and we use taps, whether it's in the, in the mobile device or whether it's in in the other login to the computer front end, it's extremely easy to use. So on that note, I will turn it back over to Ian just as soon as I get back onto the meeting. So I'll stop the screen share. Okay. Thanks, Mary Lynn. Um, I'll just uh, add a few more slides just to finish up. Um, we have a few questions as well that we'll take at the end. So if you have any other questions, feel free to put them into the, uh, into the questions part in the chat. So let's talk a little bit about benefits and return on investment for TAPS. So what we hear from our users is they save a huge amount of time. Um, they can they typically save a couple hours a day for the entire turnaround and about 75% um, of the time they would otherwise spend doing updates. Um, and these are quotes from some of our clients. One said, being able to wake up in five, in, at 5 a.m. instead of 4 a.m. made a huge difference after 21 days in the turnaround. TAP saved us 600 hours on our turnaround. Um, the other thing is that's, that's really important about this is that um, the turnarounds are stressful enough without having to the time constraints and, and the deadlines and trying to get everything done. TAP saves so much time, it just reduces the stress completely and it makes for a happier turnaround team. Another one of our clients estimated they saved $138,000 per turnaround um, on, on their turnarounds. And, and this is for a tool that they spent a few thousand dollars on to buy. Um, TAPS is much more accurate than just typing things in, uh, particularly because you don't need the schedulers who are typically fairly expensive resources to be entering the data. The schedulers can actually just look at the data once it's in the system. Um, because of that, we end up with better visibility. So again, we have, end up with more time for people to do analysis, more time to do earned value reports, all that sort of thing. So, you know, much easier and much quicker than working within uh, P6 directly. Um, it also, because you're getting the progress in, it allows you to do better forecasting because you end up with, with more time again to do your analysis. It also shows you any out of sequence activities. The reality is that, you know, um, the crews out in the field will constantly be doing work out of sequence, so we need to adapt the schedule. So, so TAPS helps you find those out of sequence activities. Um, TAPS also does an earned value calculation by 
resource assignment, which is a huge improvement over what P6 does because P6 only does earned value at the activity level. So TAPS frees up schedulers time to analyze and mitigate issues before they become bigger problems. Again, these are quotes from our clients. So some of our other clients um, have said things, things like they're faster with the barcode scanner than the checkout clerk at Walmart. Um, other ones have said TAPS has paid for itself several times over, and I'm really happy with it. Um, um, and and we get a lot of clients who, who are schedulers move from one client to another, and they say, why aren't we using TAPS here? And then we get a call for people to add TAPS to their toolkit. A couple of case studies. Uh, some of our clients, um, Shell Global is a client of ours, um, Suncor Energy, Philip 66, Canadian Natural Resources. Um, all kinds of companies across the world use TAPS um, to help update their schedules. Um, also, uh, Suncor Energy. Suncor Energy is um, a very large integrated energy company based in Calgary. Um, and uh, Suncor uses TAPS at all their refineries across North America. Um, some, to some plants have the schedulers doing updates, some have foremen doing updates, some have data entry clerks doing updates. Um, and they spun off one of their plants, the Mississauga Lubes plant was, was spun off and that introduced another client of ours, Holly Frontier, the people who purchased the plant to TAPS and now Holly Frontier uses TAPS in all of their plants as well. Nova Chemicals is a big uh, chemical company uh, here in North America. Again, they've got plants all over North America. Um, and they had a lot of trouble. Uh, initially, they didn't use Primavera at all. They just tried to do turnaround scheduling straight in SAP. They found that that didn't work very well because it was just too hard to manage. So they started using Primavera and it went better. But they found, again, it was just taking too much time and too much effort. So they're a big believer in TAPS. They use TAPS not only for turnarounds, but also all the pre-work that goes on as well. All right, so now let's take a look at some of the questions that we've had come in. Um, how much does a typical scanner cost? Well, a scanner for, for TAPS is about uh, 150 to $200. Um, they're just standard uh, ruggedized barcode scanners. Um, available just about anywhere. We prefer the, 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 the ones from a company called Symbol, um, uh, as they seem to be the best ones out there. Um, but there, you can use just about any 2D barcode scanner. Um, another question is, can we use it on steps? Yes, um, TAPS will allow you to update steps as well if you, if you use steps for things like uh, your pre-work or, or if you have checklists for readiness, it will let you do that as well. Um, why do people use 99%? Well, that's a good question. So sometimes when you're getting towards the end of a shift, um, you the, the, the foreman is estimating the work will be done by the end of the shift, but he or she is not absolutely sure. So what they do is they mark it as 99%, which means you earn all the hours in the shift, but then the next shift still has to verify that the work was completed. So 99% is a really good way to sort of flag that we think it'll be done by the end of the shift, but we're not 100% sure, so we just want someone in the next shift to confirm that it did in fact get completed. Um, another question, what about actual start and finish dates? Another good question. So what TAPS does is when you, mark, when you do the first scan to say that the activity is say 25% complete, what TAPS does is it actually calculates, okay, based on the 25% complete that you've told me you're done, when would you have started this work? And it will actually calculate the actual start. Um, this is because we want to get those numbers in fast. So if it's eight o'clock in the morning and I have a 12 hour activity and I said it's 50% done, uh, what TAPS will do is it'll say, okay, six hours ago was two o'clock in the morning, therefore that's when this activity would have started. Um, so it puts that in. Um, if you're happy with that, if it's, if it's accurate enough for you, um, then you can just keep going. Um, and for 90% of our clients, that's accurate enough. But a few of our clients want the exact time, and so they get that written on the, on the report, and then they just update the actual um, start calculation that pops up on the, on the TAP screen. You can manually edit that field as well. When you mark the activity as being finished, it puts the finish date and time as of the update time that you entered. So again, it, it says, okay, you're done as of now. 
Again, if you wanted to go back and update that and say we were done two hours ago, you can do so manually. But for most of our clients, they don't bother. It's good enough to know what shift it started in and what shift it finished in. Um, can you scan into more than one project at a time? Yeah, absolutely. So if your turnaround schedule is broken up into, say, one schedule per unit or, or something like that, absolutely. Taps. Um, using the barcode actually goes and looks anywhere in any Primavera project. So you can have pre-work and turnaround work on the same sheet. You can have different turnaround schedules. As soon as you scan it, it will it knows where you where, where that activity exists in Primavera and will update that project. Now the only caveat there is if you don't have access to the project, it won't let you scan because we use Primavera's security model. So if you don't have access to a project and you try and update it, it won't let you. Um, is there a posting option for approvals prior to integration into the schedule? Not in TAPS. So the idea is to get the, the, the progress in quickly. And so therefore, it goes directly in. We do have a different version called CAPS, which does allow an approval process before it comes in. And that's more for capital projects. Um, so if you really want to do that approval, then you can look at CAPS instead. Um, again, most of our clients they're not concerned about the approval process because they need to get the, the everything done quickly. And the whole idea behind TAPS was, was to be fast, accurate, um, and, and, and not worry so much about the approval process. But CAPS does cover the approval process. Um, in P3, the software has the capabilities to send activities to a responsible person. Once a responsible person updates the activities, um, P3 updates the schedule. Um, why is this feature not in P6? Uh, good question. So um, P3 had a lot of features that never made it into P6. Um, and, uh, you know, um, there's some of those things that we miss. Um, if you want to do that kind of thing where you want to send activities to a responsible person and have them update and bring it back in, I think Primavera called that Primavera Mail. Um, I would actually recommend that you use another one of our tools, which is called P6 Loader for that. I mentioned Nova Chemicals earlier. Um, Nova Chem does that for some of their pre-work where it's being done by somebody who's not on site. And what they do is they use P6 Loader, which extracts all of the activities into Excel. Then they, then they run a macro, which parses up the Excel file and emails it out to all the people. When it comes back in, they load it back into P6 using P6 Loader. So they basically emulate that whole idea of, uh, of the P3 mail or Primavera mail functionality that uh, is no longer available in P6. Um, I think that's all the questions we have. If anybody else has any other questions, please feel free to post them. Uh, Ian, if you wanted to check the chats, there was one in there oh, by was there? Okay. Navid. Yes. OK. Um, so can I tell you a little bit about what TAPS is based on? So uh, in terms of programming, uh, TAPS is, is, uh, is, is Java-based. Um, it runs essentially on a web server. And, and what the way that the system works is it communicates to P6 through the Primavera APIs or web services. Um, so the, uh, the idea behind it is that uh, when you run it on mobile or you run it um, on the computer, you're running it through a web server, um, which is serving up the pages. So it basically runs in a browser type environment. Um, uh, we, as I said, the Oracle part of this of the equation is Primavera's APIs or web services. So again, we have all the security that's built around, uh, or it's built into P6, and you have to log in just like you would into into P6. Okay, um, our contact information is here. I know there's a number of people on the on tonight's or this morning's webinar who are from the Philippines. So uh, Donna's phone number is there in the Philippines. Um, so if you have any questions in the Philippines, reach out to Donna and she'd be happy to answer them for you. If you're in any other part of the world in North America, our contact information is here. Um, there's an Australian number as well. And of course, Mary Lynn's phone, num phone number and email are on the screen as well. Feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or if you'd like to learn more about TAPS or any of our other tools like P6 Loader or, or CAPS, and we'd be happy to share those with you. 
So again, thank you for attending. Um, if there are no more questions, we will stop there. I'll stick around for another minute or two just in case there are additional questions.